94% muscle, hey, just like me. 4% connective tissue, 2% brain, just like me. Quantum detonation will occur within two hours. Wait, what? What is that? Ah! Hello everyone, my name is Lucael and welcome to Subnautica. So if this is your first time on the channel, which I think there are some pretty good chances that it is, a very warm welcome to you again. My name is Yukael. Uh, this is my little corner of the internet on which I play all kinds of games, from big budget games like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or Elden Ring, to smaller indie titles like Outer Wilds, Papers, Please, Inscription, and now I guess Subnautica. I mean, a lot of these games are not really indie games because they have a publisher, but you know what I mean, right? So yeah, I like to play all kinds of different games and then we try and have a nice, fun, chill time with all of them. I try and get really into the lore, really take my time and be thorough and uh, immerse myself in the worlds and the stories. So I've been doing blind playthroughs on this channel for about three years now, I think. And uh, my most successful playthrough by far has been Outer Wilds, which I absolutely loved. It was so amazing. I really fell in love with it and uh, I was so grateful that I got to play it for the first time and share it with all of you. It was a really great experience. So after I was done with Outer Wilds, people were asking me for one thing. Please play Subnautica. Luke, when are you gonna play Subnautica? Luke, you should really play Subnautica. Oh, if you loved Outer Wilds, you're really gonna love Subnautica. So well, I gave it a few months, but finally it is time. We're going to dive into Subnautica. I'm actually even wearing the same striped shirt that I wore for my first episode of Outer Wilds, so uh, consider that my lucky shirt, I guess. Let's hope that this game goes as well as Outer Wilds did. Uh, I'm actually quite nervous to start this game for multiple reasons. I'm nervous because I know that people really love this game and so I want to do it justice. I want to make like a fun let's play to watch. Uh, so expectations are very high. But I'm also pretty nervous because from what I understand this is kind of like a survival type game. Which I'm not really used to playing. You know like most everyone I've played my share of Minecraft and stuff like that. But I wouldn't say that like survival games are really my go to. It's not really my preference so um... I'm kind of curious to see how we're gonna do with this one. I'm definitely up for like any exploration and stuff like that. This is the stuff I really love. I was also a bit worried that I wouldn't get to record this game because I am playing this on PC right now. I don't, I don't have like the most amazing PC, so I was worried that maybe it was gonna be laggy or... I am running the game on like medium settings and it seems to be running fine. So uh, we're gonna do it like that for now. And if I end up having some trouble with the footage then I might switch to like the console version. I'm also nervous because this is a game about exploring the depths of the ocean. And like, I think anyone with a hint of common sense would tell you that the depths of the ocean is a terrifying place that you don't really wanna be. You know, it was already pretty scary exploring outer space in the outer wilds, but I think exploring the ocean might be even scarier. You know, we often hear how like we actually know less about the depths of the ocean than we do about outer space, which is like really scary. <laughs> All right, so I think that covers about everything. Again, I'm sorry about the long intro. Without any further ado, let's dive into Subnautica. So we're going to hit new game. Uh, we've got four options here, survival. So yeah, alien planet. You know, for the longest time I thought this game was about exploring the ocean on Earth. Like I think most people thought. But it's actually on an alien planet, which is even more terrifying because that means that there's really no limit to what kind of weird creature they can throw at us, so ugh. But uh, so our options are survival, freedom, hardcore and creative. So obviously we're not gonna go creative or hardcore. Um, the only difference between survival and freedom is in freedom you don't have hunger or thirst. Now, I'm gonna be honest, if it was just me playing this game, I would definitely go without hunger or thirst because like, I don't really like having to manage these kinds of resources. Like, you know when you're playing Minecraft and your character is always hungry, it's like ugh. It's kind of a hassle, but I do assume that survival is like the intended way to play the game. I assume that's what you guys want me to play, right? You want me to play in survival, so alright, we're going to choose survival and I guess we'll do our best to manage hunger and thirst. So there's our ship right there crashing on this alien planet. Altera, I guess that's the name of the company that we're flying for. Attention. Yep, sounds like we're in a bit of an emergency. Launch in three, two, one. Oh, so we're in an uh, escape pod. There's the ship up there. Massive explosion. 
Was there anyone else on the... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's gonna hit me. That's... That's... Called it. <laughs> that's gonna hit me. Oh, no, it fractured my helmet. Oh, well, shit, no. Oh. Never mind, the fracture is gone. I guess it's a self-repairing visor. Uh, oh, I need to get out of here. Uh, 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 oh. Yes, yes, fire extinguisher. Damn, we're in the club. All right, use feedback menu to, re oh. Booting in emergency mode. Altera. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. You know what? All things this considered, PDA I agree. has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive. To keep you alive on an alien world. Please Ooh, refer well, thank to you. the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Thanks. Power, quick slots, excellent. Okay, climb ladder. Uh, okay, so we're like in a very tiny ship. Let me just get my bearings again. Uh, uh, and yes, as you can see, I am playing this on controller, which I guess is maybe not like the optimal way to play uh, first person games of this style, but like because of my recording setup, having my keyboard and stuff would be kind of complicated. So, uh, I'm going to use the controller for now, and if it proves to be a little too difficult, then we might switch later, you know? But uh, after a while, I did with the controller, and it, it was just fine, so I'm going to try using a controller for this one. So, all right, let me... That was a very intense beginning, so let me just kind of take a moment and uh, gather my thoughts here. I did set it, the thing in the options. I did go through the options at the beginning, and there was an option to uh, for the PDA to pause the world which uh, I'm definitely going to use because, you know, I need that time to uh, talk to you guys and stuff like that. So, assign quick slot. So we got a fire extinguisher. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I don't seem to have any suit or any kind of equipment. We got blueprints for titanium. A bunch of stuff. You can pin the recipe. So yeah, like with most survival games. Copper wire, battery. Uh, it's going to be a lot of resource management, isn't it? Um, filtered water. Ingredients unknown. Okay, I mean, it's water. Disinfected water. Bleach. I don't think you should be drinking that. Standard O2 tank. Okay, so these are just blueprints. It's not stuff I have. It's stuff I can make. Okay. Um, beacon manager. Life pod. Okay. Photo manager, we can take some photos. Uh, logs, which are empty, and then data banks. Uh, ooh, there's a lot of stuff here. Oh my, okay. Should we read all that? I'm gonna take a little look around the ship first. Uh, okay, so were we headed to this planet, or did we just crash land on this planet because like that was the closest one? Uh, what about everyone else on the ship? Are there like a bunch of other escape pods? Is it just me? I don't really know. Medical kit fabricator. Pick up first aid kit. Ooh, okay, I have a first aid kit now. Can I assign it? Okay, I cannot assign this to a quick slot. Treated bandages applied to stunch blood flow. So yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of danger on this planet, unfortunately. Uh, damaged radio, use repair tool. I don't think I have a repair tool. Uh, fabricator resources, sustenance, personal, deployables. Uh, oh, okay, so these are like all my different blueprints. So I can use this fabricator to build a bunch of stuff. So we got electronics, uh, water. Okay, so I need some bleach if I want to make water. Uh, personal equipment. So we got O2 tanks, fins. There's a lot of stuff here. They throw a lot of at you all at once. Okay, so a scanner. 
that definitely sounds useful. Spectroscope scanner used to acquire technology. Okay, yeah. Um, deployables. Okay, so there's a lot here. Uh, oh, okay, so the power is uh, these power cell on the ship. They're all at 25. I guess that means they're going to go down over time. Ugh. Warning, circuitry test failed. Secondary systems offline, radio offline. Distress signal broadcast failed. Flotation device deployed. Hull integrity okay. Uh, storage contain... Oh. oh, okay, so we have some stuff in storage. We have a flare. Disposable light source useful for distracting certain predators. Uh, oh, okay, so nice. We got some filtered water. Non-vegetarian. How's that possible? How is water non-vegetarian? Filtered using an all-organic membrane. Okay. And then nutrient blocks. Okay, so we do have at least a little bit of food to get us started, so that's nice. Uh, let's go and read. Oh. Okay, so this is what the... I guess computer told us. I guess this is the computer on my ship or maybe on the PDA. So blueprints, equipment, air pumps. Oh man, okay. Handheld scanner. I think I definitely want that. The essential science and survival tool. The scanner can be used to add new blueprints to memory and analyze unknown entities. I do love scanning stuff in games. Like in uh, Metroid Prime, you know, you get to scan everything in the environment and I always love that. Do my... Does my hunger and, like, thirst go down while I'm in the PDA? I hope it doesn't. It emits electromagnetic radiation in the specified direction, which is reflected by the environment and then analyzed to determine the physical makeup of the targeted object it has four primary functions. Blueprint acquisition, organism analysis, which that's going to be very useful, will attempt to match scanned organisms against the onboard database. If no match is found, then the species will be assigned an easy-to-remember name. Okay, very nice. A new databank entry will be created. Okay. Medical analysis. Scanning any living organism will display basic information on their state of health. Okay. And a self-scan. You may run a self-scan to determine their own physical well-being. The scanner will be searched for foreign bacteria, other signs of ill health, and compare with available data to provide a diagnosis. Okay. Get a repair tool, which again I definitely need. Repair tool can be targeted at any common device, control panels, habitat modules, radios, to stitch wires and seams back together at the atomic level. So we're talking about like some very advanced technology. All good technicians keep one of these under their pillow. <laughs> Most people don't care why it works, just that it saved their life that one time. But in case you're curious, it combines scanner and fabricator technologies to determine the proper specifications for the targeted object. Then rearranges the available physical material to match the original specs. Okay. So that's for equipment. Then we have habitat installations, aquarium, fabricator, habitat builder. Okay, so we're gonna have to build our own habitat. Solar panel, sounds very useful. Sustainable energy, that's always nice. Uh, vehicles, mobile vehicle bay, and a sea glide. Oh. Is that like a little jetpack that you can wear on your back? Okay. Survival package. A two birth emergency life pod. Is this what I'm in right now? Short range radio. Wall-mounted fabricator. Okay, yes, I think this is what I'm in right now. Medical kit fabricator. Standard provisions. Yes. Some life pods may be equipped with different supplies, such as radiation suits and replacement parts. Board the right life pod for the right situation. Uh, an all-environment protection suit, which I assume I already have. A single solution for a universe of infinite danger. You are currently wearing the AEP suit, a hermetically sealed personal environment designed to withstand the most extreme conditions in the known universe. Damn. Onboard temperature and hydration regulation, compatible with a range of attachments. Slimline build for maximum freedom of movement. Biometric sensors, contextual heads-up display. AP suits should always be equipped before life pod launch in case of fall breach, okay? Aurora ship status. Okay, so this must be the main, like, mother ship that we were on. It's an Altera long-range capital ship. Oh, the mission. Oh, nice. Okay, so we get to know, like, the ship, the mission, 
uh, Ariadne Arm Phase Gate Installation, three year operation time. So I guess we're like some kind of engineer and we were working on installing some kind of like arm, like on the space station. So we had a command team of 23, 85 engineering team, uh, 40 support crew and nine passengers. I'm not sure which of these I belong to. So that's a pretty big, uh, it's about like 150 people. Status, sustain heavy damage in orbit of planet 4546B, cause unknown, okay. Evacuation data unavailable, of course. Engineering section, dark matter ion drive core, manned robotic suit, advanced scanner suite, long range communications relay, uh, storage for phase gate apparatus, accommodation for 150 people, multiple canteens serving healthy, fresh, and rehydrated food. I just imagine kind of like the ship in Wally, -E, you know? Like all these people just having their nice little lives. Leisure facilities including VR suite and virtual cinema. That sounds very nice, that's too bad that it crashed on the planet. Start here. If you are reading this then you have survived an emergency evacuation of a capital class ship equipped with Altera technology. Congratulations! The hard part is over. Is it though? I feel like the hard part is coming in the future. Your PDA has automatically rebooted in emergency mode. This operating system has one directive, to keep you alive on a hostile alien world. If that is not possible, it will alert salvage teams to the location of your remains. Well, you know what? Thanks for at least coming to get my remains. That, that's very nice. Uh, it features full monitoring of vital signs for timely survival advice, blueprints for fabricating a range of essential survival equipment tailored to your environment, onboard camera, microphone, and OCR technology for short-range situational analysis, press compatibility with all Altera compliant products, and be your personal and work files have been encrypted and may be retrieved at a later date by a licensed engineer. Okay. So survival checklist. And Mr. First Aid if required. Well, we are missing a little bit of health, it seems. Take inventory of available materials and supplies, decide on rations, yeah. Survey the environment for threats, I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch. And resources, construct necessary survival equipment using the LifePod's fabricator. Uh, check LifePod for damage and repair as necessary. Broadcast local distress signal using LifePod's short range radio. Are we gonna get to meet other survivors? Like, if we get to send a signal, Maybe there's other survivors in their own pods on this planet. Locate other survivors using line of sight or the radio. Find or construct a more permanent habitat. Uh, yeah. Maintain physical and psychological health until rescue. <laughs> I'm gonna try my best. This information is meant as a general guide. In the first instance, you should always follow the advice of your PDA, which has taken your particular circumstances into account. Okay. Uh, okay, so unfortunately the blueprint database is corrupted because, of course, they want you to find them. Damage to your PDA's hard drive has corrupted approximately 80% of stored survival blueprints. And we already have like a lot of blueprints, so we're gonna have like a lot of them by the end of the game. Blueprints may be reacquired by scanning a salvage technology using the handheld scanner or by downloading plans from a shipboard data box. In their circumstances, these assets will most likely be found amongst wreckage from the Aurora. So uh, I guess maybe our main objective is going to be to find the wreckage of the Aurora? To like get the technology on there? Alright damn, we've been playing for a while and all I've done is uh, reading. Uh, can I like... okay, there we go. So let's climb out and see what we're dealing with exactly. Ooh, hello! Oh, that's terrible. We're already dealing with like a couple. Aurora suffered orbital hull failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. Oh shit! Everyone's dead. Is that what you said? Zero human life. I mean, does that mean there's no one, or does that mean that she just can't detect them? Cause like there might still be people alive. Why would everyone be dead? This is a nightmare. <laughs> this is like literally a nightmare. You just look around you, there's nothing but water as far as the eye can see. Ugh, I've had like nightmares about this. What is that there? Can I zoom in? Okay, so uh, I can jump. Uh, you can see your feet just like in Outer Wilds. I get to see my little footsies. 
Uh, my shadow has like a very long helmet. On the cover art for this game, you have like this weird kind of cone head looking helmet. So am I supposed to just try and go to the ship? Maybe I should bring some uh, food and water with me. Okay, let me... I guess I'll take one of each and leave one in storage for later. Um, okay, so I get to just consume these, but like I don't know how much it's going to give me back. Okay, it says plus 75. I'm going to wait until I'm really low before consuming those because I don't know when I'm going to get to uh, get new ones. So, And I could use a flare as well. Alright, this is the big moment. Let's dive. Okay, well, we were very lucky that we actually landed somewhere in pretty shallow waters. Like, this could have been like nothing but darkness beneath me, you know? But we're actually pretty lucky in that the water is pretty shallow here. We get to uh, see the bottom of the ocean, see a lot of nice... Uh... Okay, I can like ascend and descend with the trigger buttons, that's nice. I don't have a lot of oxygen though. Let me test that. Okay, I think it's about like maybe in seconds. It seems to be almost seconds. Okay, so I have like 45 seconds of, of uh, oxygen. Let's start looking around, I guess. Um, so we got some nice little fish. Nothing too threatening for now. Um, is that is that thing releasing bubbles like in freaking Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh, it is. It's like in Sonic. Alright, so... Uh, acid mushroom. I mean... Purple fungus. Acidic flesh. Uh, I do seem to have like a pretty sizable inventory space, so I guess we'll pick up a few of these. I'm already running out of air. How am I gonna... Oxygen. <sighs> okay, you do... They do show you where your life pod is at all times, so I guess you can't really get lost. Uh, there's a lot of sounds all around me. Ooh. This game is gonna be... Uh, mm. It's gonna be really scary. Okay, I need to like get going now. I need to actually make some progress. <laughs> Because uh, we have to manage our food, we have to manage water. Uh, am I looking for like brick limestone? Oh, okay, we got some titanium. Uh, what's that thing poking out of the water there? Okay, it's just this thing there. Uh, uh, there was something I could pick up. Just a lot of acid mushroom. Seems to be the only thing I can actually... What is that over there? I'm like scared of everything around me right now. Like I don't know how... when a big fish is gonna come and attack me. I mean, this is the beginning of the game, so hopefully they made it kind of... easy at the beginning. Look at this little fish there. Giant coral tube, yeah, I'll see. Oh man, these are fast. Okay, I don't want to get too far from the ship. Um, so what am I really doing right now? I guess I'm trying to get some titanium, right? I need that to build some stuff. Beacon. Oh, okay, so this is what makes it so I can see the life pod. Okay. Well, I guess what I want first is like a repair tool. But I'm going to need some materials for that, right? I need to find some limestone. Um, where is the limestone? I guess these little rocks spoken out. Copper is an essential component of oh. all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Well, hey, that's good news, right? That's an improvement. That's a little better. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of oxygen. Oxygen. Yes. Okay, so one quick... Oh, I should save.
One quick thing is uh, it's a little weird. It's a little weird that ascending is on the left. I don't know why that's weird to me. All right, we're going to descend with this, ascend with this. For some reason, that kind of makes more sense to me. I think maybe that's because that's how it was in Outer Wilds. All right, so I need to find more of these little rocks that I can break, but they're not, like, super obvious. Um, eat something. Oh. Okay. Is there a day-night cycle? I think there is, because it's definitely darker than it was before, so... Uh, okay, so I got some copper and some titanium. I need to eat... I'm gonna wait some more, because it says plus 75, so... I'm gonna wait until I'm at, like, 25. Okay, I need to find more rocks. Hello! Hey, little guy. Okay, I'm kind of like scared of everything. Uh, where are the rocks at? There's one right there. Okay, that's some titanium. Ooh, that's a big tube here. Oh man, this... This is gonna be a hard game for me to play, because uh, I'm already getting scared. <laughs> I'm only at the beginning. Oh yeah, it's it's getting dark. Who knows what happens on this planet when it gets dark? That might be when all the predators come out. But uh ah, and it's getting dark underwater too, so and I don't I don't have a lamp. So uh, yeah, I need to get back to the life pod. Oh, the, you know what? There's actually quite a bit of uh, light just from these, all these plants, they generate a little bit of light. Can you like come in from the bottom? Oh, you can. Oh, that's super useful. Nice. All right. Um, uh, so I can make an O2 tank. I guess that's like a single use thing. What I want is the scanner or repair tool. I need some cave sulfur, some silicone rubber. Where am I gonna find that? I need two creep vine seed clusters. Okay. Oh man, this is a lot. Okay, what should I focus on right now? I feel like I should be focusing on tools. Oh, a flashlight. Okay. Well, I need batteries. I don't know how to get a battery. Survival knife. That would be nice. I need all of these, but I guess we're gonna start with like the repair tool? Can I pin more than one? Oh, okay, you can. So I definitely want these three. An O2 tank. Now, is an O2 tank a single use thing? Or can I like stack them? I guess if we're gonna craft it. Ooh. High capacity O2. Oh, okay. So. 30 seconds of oxygen? Right, right, right. Plus my 45 that I have. Oh, okay, so some items take more space in the inventory. This is like Resident Evil rules, okay. So I don't think it's single use. I think you just have that now. So it just added more oxygen for me. So that's very useful. Um, okay, so what else can we make? I'm still good on sustenance. Bins, high capacity. I mean, that would be nice eventually. I don't think we're gonna do that for now. First aid kit. Detecting increased local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during planet fall. What do you What do you mean? What do you mean with your radiation? Am I suffering from radiation poisoning right now because of the? Ooh. Damn, look at that view. That calorie intake recommended. And you scared me. <laughs> what am I hearing? What am I hearing? Oh, there's so many scary sounds. It sounds like something growled right next to me. Uh, okay, well, I guess I should eat. Let's eat this nutrient block. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. And then, uh, some... Oh, man. This game is like... Wait. 
oh, that's what was happening. I was like, why can I click my joystick and then it like flashes and it's taking pictures. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm like super scatterbrained right now. There's like a lot to think about. <laughs> I'm kind of a little bit overwhelmed. Um, they really just throw you in. Okay, so... Vital signs stabilizing. That's good. So something about radiation coming from the ship. Is the ship radiation like affecting me? Maybe I need to like get away from it as soon as possible. This planet is moving like super fast. Maybe we're on the moon. Maybe we're on like the moon of this planet. No, this has to be the moon. This has to be the moon of the planet we're on, right? That's why it's moving really quickly. Uh, what's all this smoke? Why is there so much smoke coming out of there? I guess because it's really cold outside? There's no indicator of the... Uh, oh, there's another moon right there. Okay, I'm gonna save now that I just ate. Uh, let me go back inside. So I don't have a flashlight. So to make these, I'm going to need... How can I make a battery? Oh, I can already make a battery. I, I just assumed it was going to use like some really rare materials. I can already make a battery. Oh. Near blueprint acquired. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so it's really not difficult at all to make a battery. That's good to know. Uh, well, hey, that means I can almost make a flashlight. I just need some glass. And then to make my little scanner, I just need like some titanium. So that's pretty easy to get. I can probably get that right now. Plus, we're getting some light again. So very nice. All right. Let's try and go get more titanium. Once we have our basic tools, I think everything's going to be much easier. Hello. Oh. Oh, you... Wow, you are very loud. Ooh. Okay, that dude just exploded. I think he just killed this thing. Can I grab you? No? I'm sorry, buddy. You got caught in the... You got caught in the crossfire. That dude really just... Did... Oh. Ooh, got some cave sulfur in there. Nice. Detecting sulfur deposits Ooh, in the local cave systems. Nice, nice, sulfur nice. Is an essential component of the repair tool. Ooh, hey, we're getting some, some good stuff. Some quartz, maybe with quartz I can make like glass. Got some limestone, very nice. Uh, okay, okay, we're making some progress. Creature egg. Okay. Alien eggs. I do have oxygen, but not that much. Need to get out of here. Where's the exit? Quick, 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 quick. Ah, shit. Ooh. Okay, that was very close. All right, so we do have more oxygen, but we still don't have like that much, so I need to be careful. Um, well, hey, we got some nice materials. Let's see if we can find anything else. Once I have all my tools, it's going to be a lot better. More quartz. Not sure what we can do with quartz, but I'm going to pick it up. Seems important. Creature eggs. Maybe I can eat those. I don't know. Ugh. Friendly? Friend or foe? Uh, you don't look too bad. What is that? Ah, Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, that thing hurt me. Okay, I get it. I get it. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm sorry for bothering you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> scared me. Okay. Uh. Okay, okay. Ah, oh, man, that thing did a lot of damage. You can hear, like, kind of a lot of growling and stuff. Must be like big whales far away and stuff. Uh, I hate that I get, to, I can't really like stand around and just admire everything because like this whole time I'm gonna be missing like food and stuff like that. That's why I hate managing food and thirst. Like I really wish I could just play without that, but oh well. All right, so let's see, what can I make? I can make some glass with the quartz. Nice. 
with that I can make a flashlight and then for titanium I need okay I'm not sure uh, okay well give me flashlight Ooh, perfect uh, okay so I have to hold it it's like a big hair dryer kind of thing and it has power uh, how can I power it back? Oh, maybe I can use the the power cells. Okay, well, I'm not gonna use it unless I really need to, because I I have limited... Well, then I guess I guess you can just make a new one if it runs out, right? So now... Okay, so we get a bunch of quartz. Battery-powered, all-environment light source. Okay. Uh, maybe if I can just make, like, a new battery, I can recharge it. Uh, creature egg, unidentified egg. Okay. So how can I like get rid of something if I don't want to keep it? I don't know how to get rid of it. So I took the picture like just by panicking there. Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. Yeah. So we, I have to kind of explore the caves, and uh, to get the sulfur, I need to let this little exploding creature uh, kill itself, and then I can. Ooh, alien eggs. Evidence suggests that a substantial number, if not all of the local species, reproduce through egg laying. I guess that makes sense. Eggs can be found resting on the seafloor, buried beneath detritus, or even wedged into cracks in the rock. Different species likely favor different biomes as their nesting grounds. Eggs discovered in the wild are in some form of natural stasis, likely awaiting ideal conditions in which to hatch, or the delivery of some vital enzyme which will kickstart the process. So fish jizz, basically. It is impossible to calculate the species of the egg from the exterior, however it may be possible to stimulate a hatching response if an egg is relocated to a suitable alien containment unit. Okay, that's very complex. Okay, so with silver I could make a high capacity tank. Fins to move faster, this would be nice. I'm not like the biggest fan of games in which like you need this object to make this object to make this object. Like, I know that's the crux of most survival games, like, you know, Minecraft. And I remember No Man's Sky was like this, and it, it kind of... It's a little tedious, to be honest. But uh, I'm going to try my best to, you know, work with it. Okay, well, for now, I definitely want the scanner, and I want the repair tool. For which I only need some silicone rubber and some titanium. Okay, so again, I need a battery... Wait, I can already make a battery. Okay, I can already make a battery, so let's make another battery for our next tool. Let's just make more glass. That's gonna get rid of our quartz. Okay. And then... Uh... Okay, so I just need some titanium for the scanner. Can I, like, just drop in from the bottom? Oh, you can! Uh. Okay, that was a... Ooh, look at this big manta ray! Hello, friend! Oh, it's jumping! Hello! Okay, it seems pretty friendly. So, we need to go back in these cave systems to get the titanium, unfortunately. I don't know, like, if the materials kind of respawn after a certain amount of time. Like, this guy is just gone now. So, need to find other ones. Oh, some lead, okay. So I could be using my flashlight here. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, the, the quick selection at the bottom with the controller is not the best. Ooh, so I found some gold. Wow, okay, so some of these things I assumed would be really hard to find, but they're not actually that hard to find. Some titanium, copper, let's get out of here. Yeah, you really don't have a lot of time. I should try and make a better... Uh... Shit, fuck. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I got lost in the caves. Ah. So what happens if you die? That was like the stupidest death. You died and lost some belongings. Oh. Okay. 
You took away my food? Oh, that's terrible. Ugh, damn it. Yeah, I, I went too far into the caves. I really need like a, a bigger... Can I equip more than one of these? No, it seems like there's only one slot, so I think you can only equip one. So I just need to improve it because uh, I really don't have a lot of time before I run out of water, of a, before I run out of air. So it seems like they took away my my water, they took away my food, but they do like refill your. I think, shit. All right, let's try again. Try not to die this time. Okay, so it this thing did not respawn. I guess I shouldn't venture too far into these caves, right? Because uh, I run out of air very quickly. I need these like little yellow plants, whatever they are. Call it writing weed. And that's a big tunnel here. Got some nice little techno music to spring us along. Get us some titanium quartz. Uh, a creature egg. I mean, I don't think these really do anything, but. Okay, okay. I gotta keep an eye on my oxygen and just, yeah. Get up there. Uh, still got space for some more. Let's try and find more. Is this fun to watch for people? Just me like going around and hitting little blocks? <laughs> uh, ooh, got big, big plants. I thought maybe there was something, but no, I think it's just a plant. Ooh, what's this? Some kind of box? Sea glide fragment? This must come from the ship. It's like clearly human technology. There's some more here. Ooh, metal salvage. Nice. There's probably more down there, but I feel like now I'm venturing like a little too far from the from the pod. Silver-based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. Big fish over there. That worries me a little bit. Let's not mess with those. Some salt deposit. This is what I need to make uh, filtered water. But uh, yeah, do these resources like respawn over time? Or if I grab them and then that's it, like they're gone. I mean, I guess you can always find more, but then you gotta go like further and further away from your ship, you know? I'm already getting a little far now. Uh, okay, well, I got a bunch of stuff here. I guess we can go and see what we can make with those, right? I would just want to try and be careful since we're still at the beginning. Can't pick that up. Yeah, the big problem is gonna be hunger and thirst. Oh. But I guess once we get started, it's gonna be not so bad. Once we have all of our like basic stuff. Uh, I still haven't found what that little yellow plant is. I haven't found any of those. All right, all right. So now we can make some deployables, a waterproof locker. A little storage, okay. Oh, I can make a higher capacity one now. But I need to like unequip it. Let's do that. High capacity, yes, yes, definitely that. That's really gonna be useful. So that puts us at 135, that's much better, okay. And I can make my scanner, okay, great. That's really gonna be useful. The scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. Ooh, searching. Wait, this self-scan? Sure. Self-scan complete. Vital signs normal. Continuing to monitor. Okay, well I guess that's good. 
Wait, the scanner also uses battery? Uh, I mean, batteries are easy to make, so I guess it's not a big deal, but I just wish once you have your tool, you know it works and then that's it. Like, you don't need to worry about it again. Metal salvage. What can I do with that? A sign? Okay. What do I do with that? Just nothing? Okay. Okay, I'm going to move the scanner on the left. And I guess then this? I don't really need the flare. Uh, nor the... F do I really need the fire extinguisher other than like that one time in the ship? I don't think I really need it, so... Actually, I think I'm going to put that in the storage container. Because why would I need the fire extinguisher? I'm going to be in the ocean, so you know, I don't really need that. Okay, this is battery powered, but then here it doesn't say battery powered, so... Hmm. Huh. A bunch of creature egg. I don't know if these are really worth like anything. Okay, well, at least I now have my scanner, so I'm happy about that. Uh, a rib, rib breather. Conserves oxygen when diving deeper. Absorbs and recycles CO2 into breathable air. That would be nice. I guess this is like the best capacity tank we can get so far. Because I don't see any other types, so... We're gonna need to find the technology and scan it, I guess, to get like even higher capacity ones. But 135, that's already really good. That's like two minutes that I can spend underwater. So uh, I'm going to need some fins because swim speed would be very useful. Let's see, scanner is done. Now we need the repair tool. Uh, need silicone rubber and titanium. But I guess I've already used all my... Uh... Oh no, I can make some more. Okay. Titanium. And then to make the rubber, I need, yeah, I need these yellow plants. The creep vine seed cluster. Not sure where to get that. And to make a battery, oh, you get the batteries from the acid mushroom. Okay, well, that's really easy to get, actually. So that's not going to be a problem. That and some copper ore. These are very common, so getting new batteries should not be a problem. I just need to know where to find these yellow plants. Wiring kit. Uh, computer chip. Oh. Wonder what you can do with that. Sustenance. I don't know how to make food, though. It tells me how to do water, but not food. Rebreather. Well, I mean, I don't know when I'm gonna get to do that, but I guess I could pin it. Some fins, yeah. Habitat builder. I guess the survival knife would be nice to get at some point as well. Okay, well... We're making some progress. Let's uh, see if we can use the scanner. Woo! Acid mushroom. Hey. Acid mushroom, a common spore bearing fungi, fungi species. The flesh contains a highly acidic compound which leaches into the water if the outer skin is penetrated. Not clear which predator species necessitated such extreme countermeasures, but the acid mushroom's numbers suggest it has successfully deterred most of them. Uh, inedible. Yeah. Acid as applications in battery fabrication. Yes. So once you've scanned it once, then it doesn't, like, you don't scan it anymore, so... Well, these are good for batteries, so I'm definitely gonna pick up a bunch of them. Let's see what else we got. Can I scan all these little fish going around? Can I scan you? A peeper! Come over here, little peeper. I just want to add you to my data log. Got a, a, oh, I need to be really close and like they, they're kind of shy. All right, let's scan the giant coral tubes. I'm just going to be reading a bunch of stuff. The variety of coral formations on 4546B appear to be different solutions to the same problem of maximizing water and nutrient flow through the colony. These particular variants funnel water down a tube, filtering nutrients as they pass. Their size suggests they have been highly successful. Assessment. Coral tube samples are rich in calcium, exploitable in bleach fabrication. Okay. Um, I should save again. So you only have one save slot, I'm noticing. You can't, like, do multiple saves. Bladderfish. Come over here. Ooh, look at this guy with the big eye. 
This unusual herbivore appears to be mostly defenseless and bears little resemblance to the other life forms around it. Yeah. Semi permeable. Oh man, they're giving you a lot of information. The bladderfish is able to filter air and seawater into its body cavity through a unique membrane which surrounds its spine like a bladder. This allows it to remove and consume organic particulate cut on the way and adjust its bu bu buoyancy. Buoyancy? Buoyancy. Open ended vascular tubing can be angled and contracted to pump out water and achieve low. Are you guys interested about all this stuff? Like, I kind of like reading about the lore and the creatures and stuff like that, but if it's too boring for you guys, just tell me and I can always skip that stuff, you know? Largely oblivious to threats and practically immobile at night, it only identified defense mechanism is that it's composed almost entirely of water, air, and cartilage. So basically, predators don't care about it. Uh, it is edible. Oxygen may be retrieved from the bladder and added to tanks on consumption. Membrane has applications as a natural water filter. Come over here then, my friend. Oh. Alien life forms may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. Come over here. Come over here, peeper. Don't be shy. I just want to scan you. Ooh. Okay, so the scan doesn't need to be in uninterrupted. You can just kind of scan it a little bit, even if it like goes away. A peeper. Is that its eye? That's not as cute if that's like one big eye. A fast prey fish encountered in shallow waters and rich in protein. Develop side facing eye. So it is the eye. Ugh. Okay. Capable of discerning colors not just in shallow waters, but in a variety of lighting conditions. It is also able to close its eyelids thus preventing light from reflecting off the lenses and rendering the peeper almost invisible to nighttime predators. Powerful fins, the species has evolved powerful fins which enable rapid acceleration in still water and the ability to leap meters into the air to avoid pursuers. It has a little beak, man, look at all the stuff they're telling you about the peepers. Likely used to break down corals in tough vegetation, an unusually large nasal cavity serves no obvious purpose and appears to be specially evolved to detect a single specific enzyme. Nothing encountered on the planet so far produces a matching odor. That's kind of strange. Expulsion tubes. The tubes attached to the peeper's torso are connected directly to its stomach and gills and appear to be designed to expel its contents and demand. Purpose unclear. While the peeper is well adapted to survive in shallow waters, a number of its features serve no discernible purpose. It would appear to be just as well suited to survive in deeper waters, and is somewhat more intelligent than the usual small herbivore. Herbivore. Assessment edible, high calorie count, further research required. Let's try and catch one. Yeah! Come over here, little peeper. I guess you can eat those things, right? That's why they kind of run away from you. Come over here, come over here, come over here, come over here, yeah. Uh, okay, it's getting a little bit dark now. Hello? A shuttle bug. Ooh. A common scavenger at the base of the food chain. Mouth parts. Small enough to be of little threat to most organisms, this creature is clearly adapted to feed on the waste products of the ecosystem around it. Three mandibles used to orient themselves when drifting and to filter through detritus on cave floors. Three legs, high strength muscles can propel the life form great distances through the water as well as ambulating them across the seafloor. Assessment Necessary waste rec recycler presence may indicate nearby cave systems. So I guess like the most important thing you're supposed to read is like the assessment at the bottom that tells you what you can actually do uh, with that thing. Uh, okay, well, again, it's getting dark, so I'm gonna go back to my sh- Ooh, look at this big guy. Rabbit Ray. How cool. Ooh. Again with the big eyes. Oh, it does look kind of cute. It does look a little bit like a rabbit. A herbivorous... A herbi herbivorous... Herbivorous, aquatic life form, rabbit rays appear to live serene and solitary lives with few predators, a natural sense of curiosity, and awesomely poisonous flesh. Uh, got twin orange appendages mounted on the head, sends vibration in the water. Markedly similar method of transportation to that of 
Earth rays. Okay, so this kind of confirms that we're from Earth, I guess. Zero genetic resemblance detected, suggesting these two species independently developed similar solutions to their environmental circumstances. That's such an interesting aspect of like alien life forms is like, what are the odds that aliens would evolve into similar creatures than the ones we have on Earth? Because like, there is such a huge variety of creatures on Earth. You would assume that on alien planets, there would be creatures that kind of look similar. Like if they've evolved kind of along the same circumstances like there would be fish on other planet and like insects and like it, it's such a fascinating thing to think about and like there are for sure aliens out there like like just based on probability and the billions of planets out there like we know there's gotta be aliens so like it's so it's so interesting to think about that's why outer space is like so exciting it, it's one of my favorite things evidence indicates its large side facing eyes are Relatively recent adaptations, it is likely there are related race species and other environmental biomes on the planet. Assessment inedible but harmless. Okay, well, that's... That's nice. So, oh, you can just consume those. But they take away air? Huh. Okay, so they don't give you, like, a lot of food. Only 6, 12, yeah, because I guess they're pretty common, so... They don't want to make it too easy on you. Uh, can I scan those? Those fish there? Can I scan those? They're too fast for me. Yup. Over here, a little bladder fish. Uh, veined nettle. It takes quite a while to scan something. Common shallow water plant which frequently shows signs of predation around the edges of the leaves. Thick violet veins carry nutrients to the extremities of the fan and brightly colored seeds grow around the base and stem. Huh? Writhing weed. So a lot of different plants, but I can't grab any of them it seems. Well adapted to both shallow waters and cave systems, this plant lives in sym symbiosis with a coral species which forms around the base of the stems. I love scanning all these, these different life forms. It's so cool. So, I wonder if you can actually get to the ship. Probably, right? Continued degradation of the auroras. Drive core. May result in a quantum detonation. Continuing to monitor. Really? Are you seeing this thing is gonna freaking explode? Oh, that's very bad. That is very bad. A whole fish? Come here, little whole fish. It does have a hole. Very small herbivore found in low numbers, often around cave systems entrances where their skin coloration blends into the background. Uh, by manipulating the size and shape of the hole in its tail, it can perform unpredictable maneuvers. Smaller than most other herbivores, presumably due to lack of vegetation in low light environments. It is edible, so that's kind of like the most important thing. Yep. So I can make some batteries, but uh, I still don't know how to get that plant, so that's like my main thing. Uh, I can make some filtered water, thanks to the bladderfish, so let's do that. Thank you bladderfish for the water. I guess that's like their main thing. Oh, you can cook the food. I guess if you cook it, then you get more uh, food out of it, right? Nice. The fabricator cooks small organisms while disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids, and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. That's very useful. So now I can just eat those, and they probably give me a bit more. 21. Yeah, that's much better. 32. Oh, okay. So, you know, not too bad, actually, getting water and food. You can just get them from the fish, so... 
That's pretty good. Yum. Oh, and they give you some water too. Very nice. I don't really like these munching sounds though. That's really like loud in my ear. Ugh. All right, well, uh, my main objective right now is just to find that yellow plant, wherever that is, and uh, hopefully not die in an explosion. So let's use our flashlight and see if we can find that plant. That thing still hasn't respawned. Let me... Oh, can I scan that? Yes, a sulfur plant. These plants appear to serve as nests for the explosive organisms, I found that the hard way, which guard them. The outer petals are undamaged by the presence of the inhabiting creature, suggesting a complex co-development. The plant has evolved to feed on nutrients and minerals deposited within it by the fish, Sulfuric deposits on the inner leaves provide an insight into the mechanism by which the creatures explode. Sulfur has applications in construction of the repair tool. Yes, that's why I want one. Uh, these things do provide a bit of light, which is very nice. And I do have my own light as well. Well, now that we have a bit more oxygen, I guess we can venture a little bit deeper into these caverns, right? Some copper ore. Hello, friend. Up some lead, titanium. This music is also very nice. It does kind of remind me a little bit of the Metroid Prime music, which goes with the theme of uh, scanning for stuff. So I enjoy that. Come over here a little. Yeah, I need the fins to swim faster because these fish are like out swimming me. Coral shell plate. This variant of coral is adapted to survive in close proximity to other corals, filtering nutrients from the water and sharing them via a spore-like substance which grows around the base. No practical applications discovered. Okay, that's why you can't pick them up. Uh, oh, what is this? Metal salvage. Scattered wreckage. And as this confirms, this wreckage is from the aura, of course. Would be kind of weird if it was from a different ship. Outer layers of the materials have oxidized, suggesting it has been heated to over 1200 Celsius. This pattern is consistent with hull disintegration during the atmospheric entry. Salvage of intact portions of Altera vessels is prohibited at legal, moral, and technical levels. Okay. However, scrap such as these may be reclaimed for their titanium content at any Altera fabricator. Oh. oh, so that's what I'm supposed to do with those. Just bring them to the fabricator and they can give me some uh, titanium in exchange. So they're like, it's immoral to salvage these. Well, you know what? I'm still going to do it because uh, I'm trying to survive. So like, what's the end game of this game? Is it just to escape the planet? I mean, I, you would assume, right? Can I like pick those up? Wait, boomerang? Oh, these things? Boomerang. Let me scan you. Oh, my inventory is full. A herbivore encountered in large numbers found to frequent shallow waters and move in schools. That's right. I forgot that a group of fish is called a, a school, which is so funny. Serrated teeth suggest adaptation for grinding corals, other herbivores, her, 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 herb, herbivores. I'm not sure how to pronounce that are unable, if you can't tell already, uh, English is not my first language. <laughs> I'm sure you could figure that out. Twin fins. Unusually, this species' two fins are, are cartil a cartilage, cartilaginous, cartilaginous, <laughs> cartilaginous extension of its skeleton. They are less prone to damage and provide superior propulsion, but are also harder to grow back. The bright blue tips are in fact the end of its digestive tract where the luminescence of the corals it consumes is most focused. Most active during daylight hours and prone to flee on approach, the boomerang can more easily be observed at night when its luminescence gives it away and it seeks the shelter of the seabed. And it is edible. Okay, where are these yellow plants? 
I need the yellow plants. Um, also, how do I get rid of some of this stuff? Okay, you can just drop it. Fine. Let's drop the creature eggs. I uh, don't really need those. Need to make space for... Um... Ooh, look at these big boys. That's some big fish there. Oh! Oh, it got attacked by the other fish! This thing dropped like it's... Uh... Looks like it's carried like some kind of acid eggs. I want to scan them, but I don't want to get too close because like they look a little bit hostile. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother you guys actually. Okay, these uh, yellow plants, they have to be like near the pod. They can't be too far, right? Because they're needed in such basic stuff. Oh, another metal salvage. Um, hmm. Okay, well, my inventory is kind of full, so I guess I'm going to go back to the pod for now. Uh, it's going to be a lot of back and forth, you know? Exploration and then going back to the pod. I'm sure you guys are kind of okay with that. I have to assume that's how most playthroughs of this go. So the fabricator can, like... Uh, how can I... How can I, like, dissolve that? Like this? Uh... Oh. Okay, I guess that's how. Okay, nice. So I can make some titanium ingots. I could make some batteries. These are always useful. Also, the battery in the scanner doesn't go down very quickly, so it's not too bad, you know? We've scanned a bunch of things and we only took, like, a little part of its energy, so... It's really not too bad. Cured food? Cured food? What does that mean? Okay, now I have, like, a bunch of titaniums. I kind of have too much, honestly. I'm gonna have to store that in my, uh... Oh, so you can't keep these for too long. It's old now, so you need to, like, kind of... Eat them very quickly. Okay, I see. Um, well, let's eat one. So, what happens if I put that in the storage container? Like, is this gonna get old and gross, right? Oh, that's too bad. Uh, hopefully, the water does not go bad over time. Okay, well, we have like a bunch of titanium, so I'm gonna put like some titanium in there. Some of that in there. If I ever need more, like, I'll just come and get it in the storage. Uh, what I really need is these yellow plants. Where can I get those? I guess let's go exploring. Uh, there's also no indication of like north or south. I kind of wish there was because then I wouldn't be getting lost. Like right now my only landmark to know where I am is of course the ship and then my pod so I guess I could try going towards the ship, use that as my landmark. Uh, can I scan these fish? No, they're just gonna run away from me. Table coral. Each disc is an individual colony of microorganisms filtering nutrients from the water. Growth patterns indicate the colonies are in direct competition for positions with superior current or light. I assume that's kind of how uh, regular coral is as well. Unlike other coral species, its structure is malleable, softly pulsating as it pumps nutrients to its extremities and only turning rigid when it senses physical assault. The jewel-like nodes in the surface are concentrated buildups of rare minerals the coral is unable to process. It's exploitable in computer ship fabrication. Is it now? But I can't pick it up, so... Huh. This guy. Bunch more metal salvage. Uh, what are you? Floaters. It's got a mouth on it. Two species living in symbiosis which attach to and attempt to feed on any objects they come into contact with. 
dominant life form. The pink main body and inner suction jaw is the dominant creature. Once attached to an organism or other stable surface, it will attempt to leach nutrients in order to grow. The microorganism membrane, and the outer gel-like substance, is a mesh of microorganisms capable of forming a sealed vacuum around the creature's jaws. A thin layer of helium is stored within the outer membrane, providing buoyance, buoy, buoyancy, buoyancy to the floater and anything it is attached to. May aid in flotation of sunken objects. So can I just grab that? I got a floater. Huh. Um. Uh, okay. Do you hear that? You can kind of hear like seems like whale songs. It's strange that you don't see the ship when you're underwater, I guess because it's too far away. All right, let's keep looking for these plants. Actually, because she mentioned like radiation and stuff like that, maybe I should not be getting closer to the ship. Maybe I should be staying far away from it, but I'm just kind of using it as a landmark, you know? More salvage here. Where are these yellow plants? Mobile vehicle bay fragment. Ooh. One out of three. Oh, okay. Guess I need to scan a bunch of these. Well, there's another one right here. Grav trap fragment. One out of two. Okay. Cool. Oh, there's a bunch of boxes here, actually. A hey, sea glide fragment. One out of two. Here's the second one. Ooh, a new blueprint. Sea glide. Very nice. Uh, what else we got here? This one is closed. Okay. Counter. New blueprint. Very nice. Anything else here? Hey, we're finding a lot of stuff. That's cool. Another sea glide. Oh. Okay, because we already have the blueprint, scanning it gave us like some resources instead. What is that? A beacon fragment. Oxygen. Right, right, my oxygen. So yeah, a bunch of uh, pieces here. Okay, we're good. Uh, it would be nice if the boxes just disappeared when you scan them, but I get why they don't. Another sea glide fragment. But this stuff is gonna fill my inventory though. Alright, are there any more? Or is that everything? I want to grab everything I can. Okay, this is just another sea glide, so I don't need it. I think that's everything. Sea glide, yeah. Table coral. Oh, okay, so that was nice. We got a bunch of stuff. That's very nice. Just get my air back. I hope this radiation doesn't uh, cause any problems. Look at this big fish there. Okay, is that gonna be hostile? Let's try and get close to it. A stalker, that sounds bad. Oh, okay, I don't think you like that. Creep vine? Creep vine? Isn't this what I need? It is what I need. A kelp species concentrated in large forests in shallow sandy waters, loose roots anchored <laughs> loose roots. I got loose roots. Anchor the plant to the seafloor from where it grows steadily toward the surface in pursuit of sunlight. The stem is fibrous and rich in iron, making it both a viable base material. This is what I need. 
for fabrication of textiles as well as our basic food stuff. It's edible too, huh? Okay, I don't like the sound that creature made when I scanned it. But it's not attacking me, so... Okay, but how do I collect it, though? Life on this planet grows in unusually distinct and diverse ecological biomes. Yeah. Further study recommended. Yeah, okay. This is the stuff. This is the stuff I need. Ooh, okay, so this is it. Creep vines. There we go. Let's get a bunch of... Oh. Oh, do not attack me. What the hell? Okay, yeah, yeah, I see you. I see you. I'm getting away. I'm getting away. It's fine. You don't like me being in your territory. I understand. A stalker. A streamlined predator encountered in the kelp forest in wait of prey, leaving the safety of the shallows to feed. The stalker likely carved out its evolutionary niche at the sweet spot between speed and size millions of years ago and maybe one of the oldest species on the planet. The stalker appears to be attracted to titanium deposits, which tends to sharpen and put stress on its teeth. As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract hungry stalkers by feeding them. Oh, so I could like drop some fish in its way, I guess? And the stalker's teeth are unusually hard and fast-growing. Its elongated snout can deliver huge biting pressure to larger attackers, while also being used to reach small herbivores, seeking refuge amongst the rocks. It's got night vision. Retinal layering on the eyeball suggests adaptation for nighttime hunting. Uh, these ridges can be moved independently to deliver superior maneuverability. You're making me read a lot of complex words. Long and powerful, the stalker has evolved to hunt the fastest of prey. Stalker teeth may have applications in enameled glass fabrication. Okay, well, I wish I had like a bit more space in my inventory. Oh, okay, so they're like really big, actually. They take a lot of space. Well, that's fine, because I need them for a bunch of stuff, so we're just going to go ahead and use them. Yeah, I really wish I could uh, swim faster. Can you swim faster? So we've been attacked by our first predator, but thankfully uh, it wasn't too bad. It kind of missed us, but I'm sure we're going to meet much bigger. All right, so let's make our... Okay, first of all, we need to make some silicone rubber. Thankfully, it does make two from these big clusters. There we go. Some lubricant. Huh. I'm just going to make some rubber. Okay, so from here, we can make... Uh, well, my first priority is the repair tool, so let's do that. Very nice. Okay, so let's use it. Look at that, it's like magic. Ooh. Light port secondary systems online. Running full nice. diagnostic and outputting results to data bank. Ooh. Geological data. Category 3 Ocean Planet. This is our planet. Uh, is there like another name we can give it other than 4546B? I'm sure fans of the game have like given it kind of like a nickname. Unless maybe you eventually find out like a different name. Oxygen, Nitrogen, Atmosphere. Extensive biodiversity. Uh -huh. uh, may support Leviathan class predators. You never want to read that. That's a very bad sign. Water contaminated with high levels of foreign bacteria. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of normal. Planet is beyond Federation space. Rescue unlikely. I kind of figured. It is not recommended to explore this environment without hazardous material suits and extensive support apparatus. Gotcha. So, main power online, status okay. Everything's back online. Uh, online, online, online. Okay. So that's a good thing done. Uh, is there anything else I need to repair? Seems uh, this thing. Yes, I need to repair the radio. There we go. Play message. This is a Hours. 
Continue to monitor for emergency transmissions from other life pods. Yeah, yeah, there might be other life pods from other survivors. Like, I have to assume someone else survived this crash. Like, I can't be the only one, right? Right? Okay, well, that's done. We repaired the pods, so that's that's very nice. Let's see what else we can make. Uh, I can make some fins. That's gonna help us to swim a bit faster. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. Yes. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. Oh, okay. Uh, I can make a knife. I guess let's make one. That's always useful, right? Weapons were removed from standard survival That's a nice knife. following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I have like sort of a weapon. That's a pretty cool knife. It looks like um it looks like a famous knife in something in fiction. Which knife am I thinking about? It looks like a famous knife from like something. What am I thinking of? What like game or movie is a knife? Just like this one with the big circle, like. I can't remember, it'll come back to me. I need a wiring kit and a fiber mesh. Wiring kit. Need some silver and a fiber mesh. I don't have the formula for that. Emergency flotation device. Chemical reaction produces lighter than air gas for fast personal buoyancy. I guess maybe I need to make that. It's a tool. Does that just help you like ascend faster when you need to go back to the surface maybe? There's like a movie or something that has a knife just like this one. I can't remember. Habitat builder. Hmm. Huh. I mean, I guess we're going to need that at some point, right? So we need a computer ship and a wiring kit. Oh, the sea glide. Yeah, yeah, I need this to like go faster. Oh, a beacon too, yeah. But I need to find the I need to be able to scan some first. Converts torque into thrust underwater via propeller. Need some lubricant and some copper wire. I can probably already make copper wire because I do have copper. Yeah. Copper wire and then lubricant. I can get lubricant from this. Lubricant yeah. is essential in construction of vehicles and power plants. A sea glide. Here we go, let's make one. Let's see what it does. Ooh, that's a big thing. The sea glide will increase your effective exploration range. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys Ooh. and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. Okay, so this is meant to go like kind of far away. So, uh, oh. Can I like equip that? Oh, it goes in your quick slot. Okay. Interesting. I wonder how fast you can go with that. So that seems to be the only thing I can make for now. Let's break down the metal salvage we have. Because that's taking a lot of space in my inventory. I can make some more batteries. Congratulations, survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. Hey, thanks. Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. It Be sure, sure was. Your routine for uniform muscle development. Okay, uh... Good morning. Local radiation readings suggest the uh -oh. drive core has reached critical state. Quantum detonation will occur within two hours. Wait, what? Oh, this is bad. Wait, but I... Can I move this pod? Like, I need the... Oh, I'm deep shit if this explodes, because like then I won't have access to the escape pod. Can I move the escape pod like away from here? Two hours? Are these like real hours or are these like in-game hours? Oh no, oh no. Uh, shit. Okay, well, okay. Uh, the fins have been automatically equipped, so that's fine. Battery. Okay, uh, is that thing 
Oh, yeah. Oh, it's actually gonna take water away from me because it's too old now. Gross. Is there a way for me, like, just to get rid of it? Can I just, like, drop it? I guess I can't drop it unless I'm in the water. Okay, so toggle lights, toggle map. Let's see how this thing works. Oh, oh, we've got a map. I mean, it doesn't really go that fast. I mean, it's a lot faster than me, I guess. So I'm supposed to be like a little bit faster now. Can't say I really notice it that much, but... Okay, but like... This thing's going to explode in two hours. I have to assume they're like in-game hours. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. There are other survivors. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Pre-recorded distress call. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay. We're hanging on the edge of a cave system. This snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. Ugh. Uh, how am I supposed to know where that is? It said it was added to the PDA. Can I not like move this AirPod somewhere else? Okay. Um. Hang on. Oh, this is what you mean. Beacon manager. Life pod stranded near a cave system and under attack, but like I don't have any weapons, so how am I gonna help them? And you can even change the color of it. Huh. Okay. Well, let's put it in like red because it's a uh, it's under attack. It's like a distress signal. A hundred meter from here? I guess that's not that far. Um I can probably get to that. Flotation, emergency, pl oh, okay, so yeah, it's a tool, so it's something you put in your bar and then you can use it to like rise really quickly to the surface. That makes sense. Uh, oh, laser cutter. I guess I could use a flare to distract that, that predator that's attacking them. Well, we did just save, so should we try and go, it's the opposite way from here too. Oh, wait. 100 meter. Okay, it's actually way further away than I thought. It's 400 meters away. But we do have this thing, so... I guess let's use it. But wait, wait, wait. I don't have a flare. Oh, I do have a flare. Let's place it here instead of the repair tool. And we'll try and use it to uh, distract that predator. Oh, I should not be doing that at night, though. Should not be doing that at night. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I should wait until daytime. I'm gonna wait until daytime. Sorry, guys, but you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Do you really meet other people in this game? I had a feeling like this was a game where you were just stranded and like by yourself the whole game. I'm gonna be really surprised if we actually do meet other people, but I guess it's possible. I don't really know anything about this game other than like you explore the ocean and like you meet a bunch of creatures and like, you know, I guess you're trying to escape the planet. Let's just wait until we get some daylight. Thankfully it doesn't usually take that long. I just, I don't want to go like that far away in the darkness. That's, that's a little too scary, you know? Uh, well, let's use this time to catch a couple of fish so we can like make some food. Come here, little peeper. It's hard to grab these fish with controller, I will say. Oh, this, oh, this thing finally respawned. Yeah. 
Hey, buddy. Crash fish. <laughs> crash. He saw me. The crash fish. This unusual species. Oh, they probably respawn based on the day-night cycle, right? Like every day, kind of the resources come back. This unusual species has developed an emergency defense mechanism. Is it a defense mechanism if you die in the process, though? Based on mutually assured destruction, yeah? I mean, does that really count as defense? Forward mounted eye enables the creature to identify and track potential predators. The sulfur plant has evolved to feed on sulfuric compounds secreted by the crash fish, which makes its nest within its leaves. Stronger, more protective plants provide superior nesting grounds, which in turn provide the plant with more nutrients from larger crash fish. Concentrations of sulfur build up in the organism over time. If the crash fish collides with something at sufficient speed, the spikes on its torso are impacted, triggering an explosive chemical reaction. Equip stasis rifle, repulsion cannon, or similar before approaching shallow caves. I don't have any of those. So... I'm just gonna have to deal with them, I guess. Alright, let's go make some food. For the trip. Cook boomerang. Yum! Let's eat one right now, actually. Yup! Yum! Alright. Let's get rid of this thing. Drop. And, uh... I'm gonna save. And let's try and get to this thing. Let's see if we can actually meet someone. I'm gonna be really surprised. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the light just because that might consume less power that way. There's that uh, angry stalker there. Let's try not to get seen by that. Okay, they are pretty far away and the visibility around here is not too great. They said they were being attacked by like a snake. A giant snake? I don't see any giant snakes. Okay, this spot crashed down to the bottom. They didn't actually... Uh... Is that... Oh, ooh. Um... It says under attack, but... Okay, I'm just gonna grab my knife. <laughs> Scans suggest this biome supports extensive biodiversity and connects to a number of small cave networks. Local scans show a nearby cave entrance, depth 90 meters, leading to an unknown environmental biome. Ah, oh, shit. Of course. Oh, is that the snake they were talking about? Let me just get in here. Okay, so this is another pod just like mine, but unfortunately... Seems like they didn't have much luck. Uh, ooh, abandoned PDA. Download data. How's his log? It's the day of the crash. I don't know what the heck is happening. I'm scared and I'm not going outside. There are shadows in the water under the hatch, but I can't tell if they're rocks or aliens. And there's weird looking caves nearby. The Aurora was carrying everything needed to build the phase gate mobile vehicle bays, bioreactors, propulsion cannons. It had a cinema. There, there was a zero-G gym. My cafe. I don't understand how we're here now. I don't know why no one's coming for me. Because we're just too far away from anyone. We're outside Federation space, so no one's coming to save us. Uh, what they call a phase gate, I assume it's like, a, you know, a mass relay in Mass Effect. Like some kind of gate that allows faster than light travel, I assume. Okay, so there are other survivors other than us, but like, did this guy escape or is he just dead? I guess maybe he's just dead. Interesting. Um, ooh, a Seamoth fragment. That's a giant creature right there. Usually, like, you know. In our... Uh, ah, ew. Ah, what the hell? What's your, what's your problem? Bitch. Biter. What is that? 
Ugh. A biter. Vicious back hunting. Well, it was just the one. 94% muscle. Hey, just like me. 4% connective tissue. 2% brain. Just like me. Indiscriminate when hungry. Almost always hungry. Uh, employed in detection of bodily fluids in the water at impressive range. I'll say. You really, like, zoomed in on me there. A uh, secondary pair of eyes likely dedicated to detecting the peripheral movement of larger predators and hungry members of its own species. Overdeveloped tail fin favors outpacing and outnumbering their prey over individual maneuverability. Calculations suggest creatures up to a hundred times the biter's body weight could succumb to a focused assault by a okay, so they're like piranhas. Avoid packs, try not to bleed. Alright, got it. Um so, oh, look at this thing. I'm never gonna get to scan that, like I would need to get so close to it. 30 seconds. Oh shit. Okay, it's actually much smaller than I... Oh, look at it burying itself in the... Oh, there's like a piece of the ship there, it seems. Look at this creature there. I was about to say before it attacked me that usually in our ocean at least, like the larger something is, usually it kind of like... Oxygen. I mean, I guess just in nature overall, usually the larger something is, the more docile it is because, like, it has very few predators, you know, because of how big it is. Uh, I'm gonna save because we made, like, some actual progress, you know? And let's go see if we can find anything in the wrecks of this ship there. What is all this stuff? Is it, like, a piece of the main ship? Can I open that door? Huh. Uh, oh, well, no need to open the door, I can just go inside. A desk. Okay, yeah. if I want to make a desk. Oh, that looks dangerous. Supply crate. Ooh. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. Yes, that is good advice indeed. I really wish you could have like, maybe you can later just have like a mounted light, you know, like a like a lamp on your forehead so you can actually scan things while you also have some light because like having to switch between the lamp and the scanner is kind of annoying. Uh, ooh, another PDA there. Integrating new PDA data. Auxiliary search and rescue mission, Margaret Maida. Uh, she was a freelance security personnel lost in space near the planet. She was 42, mercenary born in the Mongolian states, experienced in ship-to-ship -ship and close quarters combat techniques, tours of duty with the Mongolian Defense Force and the Trans System Federation, which I guess is the like main like organization in this universe. Dishonorably discharged from the TSF 15 years ago for going off mission. Details classified. Emissary Kazar reports Maida was hired to accompany Paul Torgal. Whoever that is. Wait, isn't that the name of the guy we found? Like this thing? No, it's Ozzy. On board the Degassi into uncharted space and defend the ship in case of assault by pirates or rival corporations. The Sea Moth. So this is the thing I was using. Mobile vehicle bay. A deployable station equipped with fabrication drones and designed to cons construct small. So I guess at some point we're gonna have to abandon like the AirPod, right? It's just kind of there as an emergency thing for the very beginning, but then we're supposed to move on to like something like this, the mobile vehicle bay. Uh, construct small research and exploration vehicles from raw materials, common tool in almost all industrial, scientific, and colonization operations. And the C mod, okay, now that's like an actual, like, vehicle. A one-person vehicle with an independent replaceable power cell fitted in the rear. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to use, like, the power cells from my escape pod to power maybe one of these. Low-power, multi-directional thrusters enable it to function equally well in sea or space environments. Most long-range vessels carry at least two vehicles of this class to facilitate... Oh, maybe I can find one. Facilitate the exploration and exploitation of small astronomical bodies. However, they can also be fabricated at a standard mobile vehicle bay. Ah. 
Do I have like a blueprint for this? Oh, I just need to find more. Uh... Okay, yeah, I can't build one. I just need to complete the blueprint. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to need those. That's for sure. Well, I guess I don't need this thing anymore because I've already found it, right? Top speed, 13 meters. It's pretty good. Distance per power cell, 10 kilometers. Wow. It can go as far as 200 meters below sea level. That has some uh, upgrade modules as well. Can be modified by installing upgrade modules to the access point mounted on the wing. Superior power, pressure, compensation, and then sonar, defensive capabilities. It goes anywhere but land. Okay. Oh, hey, you even got a photo there. How oh, nice. Hey, we're finding a lot more than I expected. This is nice. Um. Ooh. Uh, ooh, now I'm getting a little lost though. What is this? Laser cutter. Oh. Laser cutter fragment. Need that. Got some cargo. Anything else I can find here? 30 seconds. Shit, I'm gonna run out of oxygen. Uh, supply crate. What is this? Shit, shit, shit. Okay, how can I, how can I get out of here? Shit, shit. How did I come here? I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. Damn it, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna lose all the items I just found. Shit. <laughs> I got lost in the thing. <laughs> no! <sighs> God damn it. I forgot to look at my oxygen. I hope I didn't lose too much. Like, do you lose what you scan too? Oh man. You died and lost some belongings. Okay, I think you keep everything you scan, but I probably lost some, like, items. Should I just reload my save before I went into that ship? Maybe I should do that? Two minutes? Oh, does it save when you die? But wait, is there an autosave in this game? Because I, I didn't know there was an autosave. Let's, let's see what happens if I quit and come back. I want to see if it autosaves on death. Because the last time I manually saved was before entering that crashed ship, right? I just need to, like, remember to go back to the surface for oxygen. Okay, so it does not autosave. Okay. So... That was before I went in there and scanned some stuff. So let me go to the surface and get some oxygen. What is this big thing there, I wonder? I can't imagine it's hostile, because it's so big. Alright, let's go back in, and this time let's be quick. Nah, let's try not to get attacked either. I have to hurry up, do this quickly. So, scan this real quick. Would really help if I had some light. Acquired. There's the data, there's that photo. Integrating new PDA data. So, that. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. Ben Shin. New blueprint acquired. Um. Okay, so before I go further... Wait, what was that? There was something else. Oh, command chair. Swivel chair. Sure. Let's scan those two. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the surface. Look at this thing. I mean, it does have tentacles, so like, you know, that's that's never really a good sign, but 
it might be docile. It just kind of growls. It, it, it kind of hums more than growls. It's a little bit like a whale song, I guess. I could just save. I could just save it, then go and see if it's hostile. It's so big. How close do I need to get before I can scan it, you think? Hello? A reef back? Don't get angry at me, I'm just scanning you. That's a long time to... Ooh. A reef back leviathan. This vast life form is in excess of 30 meters long, has been designed, designated leviathan class. Fortunately, it feeds exclusively... Yeah, that's what I thought. It doesn't really look hostile. On plankton life life forms in the water. Most of the life form's top side and some of its underside is protected by a thick layered exoskeleton. This suggests an evolutionary path quite different from other organisms on uh, 4546, most of which are vertebrate in nature. The reefback species has likely been able to grow far larger than other herbivores because anything large enough to break through its shell has long since gone extinct. Similar in appearance to the algae glands of the gasopod, these organs on the reefback's underside serve some unknown purpose in its digestive system and are capable of expelling small quantities of stomach enzymes into the surrounding waters. Local microcosm. An array of different barnacle and plant species grow on the reefback's shell, thrusting their roots into ancient scars in the chitin, chitin and taking advantage of their mobility to avoid predation. Nonetheless, reefbacks will often be pursued by the faster, hungrier herbivores, and thus its leviathan species is a mobile microcosm worthy of years of study in itself. Huh. Reefbacks' lifespans likely extend through many centuries should they survive their initial growth cycle. For the first few decades, their smaller size would make them vulnerable to carnivorous leviathans. Sociable, seen traveling in small pods and communicating by an echoing call, Behavior is consistent with low-level sentience. Huh. Uh, harbors plants, small fish, and male-rich barnacles. So basically, it's not hostile. That's kind of the main thing. Uh, yeah, this is the same thing as before. Vehicle, sea moth, yeah. How cool! Let me save that. So I can pick up the things on its back. That's kind of what it means, right? Oh, look at that. The tiger plant. Ooh. This plant has adapted to sense fluctuations in the water at up to 15 meters and is capable both of prehensile movement of its tubes as well as the propelling of thorns. Oh, okay. Well, it hasn't attacked me. Although capable of incapacitating small herbivores, this plant lacks carnivorous digestive organs. Would-be predators caught in its defensive perimeter serve as a warning to other herbivores not to approach, and then as they decompose, they serve as fertilizer for the tiger plant. Avoid or incapacitate. Gotcha. I'm not gonna bother you. Look at this thing. Holy crap. That's a big boy. Like, it probably can't even see me, right? It doesn't have eyes. How majestic. That's so cool, and it feels totally like a an actual creature that would exist, you know? I love its hums, it's kind of relaxing. Now that I know that it's not hostile, it's like, how relaxing, <laughs> you know? Alright, I do still want to... Emergency. Quantum detonation. Has occurred in the Aurora's drive core. The reactor. Uh oh. Are we about to die? Uh oh. Seven, six, five, four. I'm about to die. Is this the end for me? Uh, this suit fully protects... Okay, so I, I 
kind of was expecting death there. I thought maybe we were like game over. You'd had to restart from the beginning of the game because like I took too long. Okay, so now there's radiation, but it seems like we're fine. The ship exploded, but we can keep going. This suit fully protects against the effect of radiation during land, sea, and space exploration. Okay, so I need to make that. What do I need to make that? Uh, radiation suit. Some fiber mesh and some lead. Okay, I, I can find that. How do I do fiber mesh? I don't know how to do fiber mesh, though. So now, am I just, like, gonna take damage from the... from the radiation? Okay, I guess as long as I don't get too close to the ship, uh, we're gonna be fine. Okay, I, I want to go grab whatever I can from this ship while I'm here. I need to try and hurry up and not get stuck inside. Alright, so... Uh, mm, I got this already. Alright, so I came through here, then up there. Uh, let's try not to get lost in here. This I need. Laser cutter fragment. Yes, thank you. Uh, anything else? Battery charger? Hey. Okay. What else we got? What else we got in here? I wish it wasn't so dark. Got some water. A floodlight? That could be nice. Uh, anything else? I guess all the crazy have something in... Yeah. Okay, I think that's kind of everything. Um, okay, now how do I come out of here? Okay, this way. Alright, alright. Let's go back to the surface. So I thought... Yeah, I really thought the ship exploding was going to be the end of me. But now that we know that... Uh, we can survive it. I guess it's fine. Well, if there was anyone still alive in there, uh, I guess now they're truly dead. For sure. Uh, there's more stuff down there, but there's also these fish that look pretty hostile. Let's see if we can uh, avoid them. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Oh, because we're like really deep? Okay. Salvage. Oh, so it goes down like much faster now, yeah. Solve the deposit. Stream as I see my fragment. Definitely need that. Thank you. Just just salvage. Uh, what is this? Bioreactor frag. Uh oh. Oh, I've been spotted. No, I guess not. There's another one there. Ah, uh, it's right next to him though. But just let me scan that real quick. And then I'll leave. Then I'll leave. Yeah, it takes a while to get back to the surface. I might need one of these uh, buoyancy things. <gasps> Alright. There was like another thing. Uh, there. What is that thing? Seems important. It's another fragment from the bio. Oh, okay. We already have uh, both parts, so we're good. Uh, is there anything else to this ship? I'm not sure. We might have found everything there was here already. Ooh, a scanner room. Okay, that's one out of three. Integrating new PDA data. Another CMOT fragment. Nice. Now we can make a sea moth. 
Alright, that's some good progress. Plasteel ingot. Uh, scanner room fragment. Okay, two out of three. We just need one more. Uh, it's probably around here. Okay. Inventory is full already. Uh, you know, these fish, they don't really seem to worry about me that much. I think they're more interested in smaller prey, so... I think we're safe. I just need one more piece. Oh, but it's getting dark, so... I think I'm gonna get out of here. This thing, you know, it doesn't go very fast, but... It's... Cut... Fine, with knife. Why do you want me to do that? Oh, okay. Well, my inventory is full, unfortunately. Let's get out of here. Let's avoid this stalker there. We know he doesn't like us very much. And let's get back to our little pod. Some pretty good progress for our first episode, right? It's not too bad. Uh, if we could get like that uh, radiation suit, maybe we could even reach the actual ship. Let's make some titanium ingots because we have too much titanium. So let's just make them into ingots. What else can we make? Radiation suit. I need some fiber mesh, but I don't know how to make fiber mesh. I haven't found that blueprint, so... We're gonna pin the recipe. A floodlight. A scanner room. Advanced habitat module can transform a small outpost into a burgeoning science and exploration station. Oh. A 3D display in the center of the room stores local topographical data. System can scan for and pinpoint particular materials. Remotely controlled drones scan the area up to 500 meter in range. Damn. While mounted camera feeds allow for live control of scouting drones, upgrade console may be used to enhance the module's functions. A bioreactor. On planets where organic matter is plentiful but sunlight is not, a reliable bioreactor will frequently prove the most efficient power solution. Accepts all plant matter from seeds and spores to moldy fruits and vegetables. How about that? Very efficient. Can also process animal matter, even waste products. That's really useful. So yeah, sounds like you're definitely expected to build kind of like a habitat for yourself, some kind of house or like station. Now, should that be around the pod that we have or should I build it somewhere else? I'm not really sure. Oh, you can make a power cell just from battery and some silicone rubber. So that's actually really easy to make. Huh. So I need that for sure. This would be useful as well, although I don't know how to make the fiber mesh. Uh, I still don't have the habitat builder, but I could make it. I just need a wiring kit and a computer chip, and then I could start maybe expanding the base, like building an actual little habitat for myself. Uh, the sea moth. Not actually that hard to make. You just need some ingot, power cell, glass, lead, and lubricant. That's actually really easy to make. Huh, I was expecting it to be like really expensive, but it's not that bad. I'm gonna pin that. This thing, it would be useful to have. I'm gonna keep that one there. And then uh, this is just for base pieces. So like, get foundation, compartments. So this is all pretty much like titanium, glass, quartz. So I could be making my own fabricator, radio, but I already have all of those, so... So much stuff to make. This is a... Uh, this game is gonna take a while. <laughs> it's gonna be a long game. So we got some salvage. So still a lot to do, but I do feel like we made some pretty good progress today for our first episode. I guess it's not too bad, right? So I'm going to save right here. Yeah, I feel like this is a huge game. Like we've only scratched the surface. There's like so many things we can build. It said 80% of the blueprints were missing and we already had like a bunch of them. So like there's gonna be a lot of stuff we can build. 
Again, like base building and like survival crafting, it's not really my thing, but this game's world is pretty interesting. Like I love the creatures. I love that you get to scan everything. That's always really fun for me. I don't know how much I'm really gonna delve into the base building stuff. Like I might do the bare minimum I need to survive, but like it's not really my thing, but I do enjoy the game. I am having fun. I just hope that the Let's Play itself is fun for you guys to watch. I want you guys to have a good time and to enjoy this playthrough. I am encouraged by this first episode. I had a good time today. Just like for Outer Wilds, it's always like really scary at first because everything is unknown. But as you kind of progress a little bit, you get more comfortable and it's not too bad. But, but of course, we are still on the surface. So like I haven't really seen anything that scary yet. Like we're only venturing out in the daytime. We haven't really gone to the depths yet. So I'm sure there's going to be some really scary stuff later on. But... It's still pretty manageable for now and pretty fascinating. I love reading like the lore of the creatures. Uh, I hope it's interesting for you. If not, you can always just skip that, I guess. So thank you guys for watching this first episode. If you want to catch next week's episode early, you can check out my Patreon. It's in the description below. It's only $5 per month and you get a full week of early access for all of my videos. So you can catch next week's video right now on my Patreon. And uh, please leave me some comments, tell me what you thought of this first episode, did you enjoy it? Like are there some spoiler free tips that maybe you can give me to make my experience a little easier, a little smoother? I upload new videos every Tuesday and Friday, so if you don't want to miss any of the future videos, uh, please make sure and subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate that. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider like sharing it with someone or sharing it online or something like that, that always really helps me out. So thank you so much for watching this first episode of Subnautica. I had fun playing this, hope you had fun watching it, and I hope to catch you next week for some more Subnautica. See y'all.